I'm going to do a review on my Cummings Owen 4500 watt generator. I've had this now for about a month. I think I put on about 10 hours on this thing. And we're going to go through it. And I'm going to show you what I like about it, what I dislike about it. Good points, bad points. Hopefully you can get some ideas whether you want to go down this road and buy one yourself. On the front panel, we'll try to go through here and show you all the different things. So this is basically the master switch. Turn it on, it's ready to go. This is the manual start. Now this, this one thing I like about this and is the primary reason why I picked this particular generator. It can start three different ways. I have a push button here that I can hit it and it'll start up. And it has a, a rope pull that I can give it a pull. And it'll start up on a rope pull. And the real reason I got it was for the remote control. And I'll explain why I got the remote control here in just a moment. But this is the primary reason why I purchased this particular generator. So I have this genie lift, 80 foot, and down here it has this little pigtail that you can plug an extension cord in and send power up to the basket. But the problem with this is as the turret turns going clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to drag the extension cord with you and after a while it just doesn't make any sense. And so I contacted Genie and they're going to check with their engineers to see if I can put a mounted generator on the side of the turret here. That way as the turret moves back and forth, the generator moves back and forth and can supply power up here to the basket to those outlets right there. That way we don't have to drag extension cords around when we work out of the basket 80 feet in the air. And then with the remote control, we can turn the generator on and off. So that's the primary reason why I picked that particular model was to use it with our genie lift so we don't have to use extension cords. So this has lots of options. It's missing one option that is kind of a drawback. You can plug an extension cord in and run the extension cord wherever you want, but the drawback I hate, don't like about this particular generator, it's not, it doesn't have 240 volts. So right here, it has 120 volts, but only at 30 amps, and then it has two regular uh, 120 volt duplex. So because it doesn't have the 240 volts, you can't split the 240 into 120 and use one leg on the left side and one leg on the right side of a service panel. So this would be difficult to run your house with because it can't, you can't, it doesn't have two legs to split. It's a single leg uh, generator. So anyway, going through here, so we have the master switch, we have the, the off on, we have a low idle economy mode. Uh, this little port right here is for an external battery charger. Of course, along with the, the power light on here, this right here is to turn the fuel on and off coming out of your fuel tank. Of course, we have the 30 amp uh, outlet, the 220 amp. We have the two reset fuses right here. Uh, these two uh, parallel connection plugs is if you have two generators and you want to get, let's see, instead of getting 4,500 amps, you can get uh, 9,000 amps, but you have to be able to par parallel and go tandem with uh, another generator. Uh, we have the indicator lights, uh, gauges down here, a reset, and we have the little USB charger right here, which I kind of find kind of cute. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start this up, and we're going to put it through its trade. Now, as much as I got this for my Genie Lift, we can also use this on field repairs. And so we're going to see what kind of load we can put on here. And I'm going to double check the load by using this like little extension cord with a uh, clamp meter on here so I can measure the amps being pulled 
out of the plug. Let's go down to my uh, 120 AC outlet, or we can plug it in here and measure the voltage coming out of this port. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in, and my meter is turned on so we can see what kind of amperage we're going to be drawn and we're going to go ahead and try to do some real world application here first thing we're going to use is this milwaukee four and a half inch grinder now according to the manufacturer this pulls seven amps which should come down to four uh, 840 watts so we're going to go ahead and start this up so this right here shows on my current fuel situation, how many hours I have left to run. So I can go 10 and a half hours on the fuel. If I rotate it here, this is a power output. Right now there's no load on it. Shows, it shows no uh, any load running on the generator. This shows me how many gallons of fuel I have, 7.8 liters. And this is the voltage. So right now this is putting out 124 volts. And the next one here is the lifetime amount of hours I put onto it. So far, I put 11 hours onto this particular generator. I'm at my welding table. We're going to see what we can do here. So right here, it shows I'm pulling about 7 amps. So, no problem on that. So, we're going to go to the next piece of equipment. Okay, I got my safety glasses on, of course. So, right now, we're going to, going to cut a piece of two-inch square tube. Looks like it's a quarter-inch wall. So, we're going to go ahead and start this up. And here we go. Okay, on that one, I got that up to 20 amps, cutting this piece of metal in two. So that was 2,400 watts on this particular piece of equipment. Next up, we're going to thread a 2-inch Schedule 80 uh, piece of black pipe. I'm going to have to use two cameras on this one because my threader is here and my generator is on the other side of the shop. So we'll see how this will do. And this little beast here, this sucker was built in 1961. It's still going strong. Okay. to do the grinder separately the cutoff saw and the threader all separately so now the question is can we do all three all at once so we're going to go ahead and start this up and don't forget my phone we can charge it at the same time so I got my phone charging I got the pipe threader on, I got my grinder, and I got my cop saw. Now how's that for multitasking? So I was able to do all four, charge my phone run my pipe threader, run my cutoff saw, run my grinder, and still this baby hung in there, didn't blow any fuses, didn't blow any breakers. So I'm pretty happy with this Cummins generator. It has been really, really well. 
The only drawback with it is I hope I use it enough to rotate through the gasoline because if I don't use it enough, the gasoline, of course, can get bad. I can put some stabilizer in the gasoline, but I might have to manually change the gas from time to time in case I don't use this long enough because I don't want the carburetor inside to get all that varnish from old gas. Now, I know I can't ask for everything, but it would have been nice if this would have had a single pick point. Uh, this piece of equipment weighs about 80, 85 pounds or so. I don't think a single person could lift this by themselves. So it would require a team lift to load this into a vehicle. It does have this nifty little handle down here that you can pick this up and walk it away. So this Cummings generator ran me about $1,200. Haven't regretted it. It was a good, it's been a good little piece of equipment but like I said, I've only had it for two months. I've ran it about 10 hours. We'll have to see what happens down the road. But Cummings is a good name. As long as I keep putting some clean fuel in here, don't let the fuel get old, I think this generator is going to last many years to come. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the spec sheet and review some of that things. When this it came in a box with a battery, the battery charger, a little thing of oil, I was surprised on how little oil the engine inside takes but it's been a good little piece of equipment and we're going to review even more data. This is a spec sheet on my Owen 4500 watt uh, generator and I'm very pleased with it. We're just going to cover a few little things here. Uh, one th thing I like the best about this thing is how easy it is to start. There's three ways to start it with a pull cord, the uh, push button on the front of the panel and the one big thing with me is a remote start so I don't have to get up and move uh, from my work area I can just hit the little key fob and it starts and stops instantly and if I'm up in the genie lift I can start the uh, generator down on the ground and not have to come all the way down the, the sound level is really really quiet not a problem uh, if you use it for an RV I don't think you're going to be keeping people awake in the campground uh, the parallel cable would be a, a pretty good little uh, thing if you happen to have another generator from the same manufacturer, so I'm not sure how valuable that's going to be. The fuel efficiency is pretty good. The weight, I estimated it around 85 pounds. It's actually 98 pounds. Uh, here are the specifications. If you want to take a look at these, you can just go online and uh, look at these yourself and review those. But this generator is pretty good like i said i paid twelve hundred dollars for it it's a little bit up there but for what i need it it is a really good generator i hope this information was helpful and this might lead you to making a wise decision if you're looking to buy a generator i've been happy with this one so i'd like to thank you for your time if you have any comments please put them down below and i thank you for your support Please subscribe and I'll send you another video soon.